So let's do that here. Let's look at a chemical reaction. Let me just write it down. This one's already going to be balanced. Uh, C3H8, which is propane. You've probably heard of propane before. Plus 5O2, that's just adding oxygen, yields 3CO2, carbon dioxide, plus 4H2O, so 4 uh, moles of water. This is already balanced. You should always verify that it is, though. Uh, 3 carbons, 3 carbons, 8 hydrogens. You have 2 times 4 is 8 hydrogens. 10 oxygens. And here you have 6 oxygens. 2 times 3 is 6, plus another 4 gives you 10 oxygens. So this guy is balanced. Now the problem says, how many moles of carbon dioxide are formed when 0.529 moles of C3H8, which is propane, is burned? Because this is a burning reaction. You're taking some propane, you're putting oxygen with it, and the way you get that to happen is you light it on fire and they combine, and then you get uh, carbon dioxide plus water. By the way, almost anything you burn is going to produce CO2 plus H2O, carbon dioxide plus water. Almost always that's what's going to come out of any kind of combustion reaction, uh, especially the kind you'll study in chemistry one. All right, so how many moles of carbon dioxide are formed when we uh, consume 0.529 moles of this propane? So this is a great example. It's very simple, but if you don't know how to set it up, you're, you're just you're wondering, what do I do? Well, I have the reaction here. I know how much I've used of this propane. Where do I start? Let me show you the bulletproof way to do all of these problems, all right? So pay attention because we're going to do this over and over and over and over and over again. What you do is you write down what you know. You always write down what you know. What we know is we have 0 0.529 moles. And don't just put moles down. You have to say moles of what are you talking about? Moles of C3H8. And I draw my horizontal line and I draw my vertical line. What we're going to do is a unit cancellation here. This is one of the first things I taught you in chemistry and this is why it's so important. What we need to do is come up with a conversion factor. What we're trying to end up with is moles of carbon dioxide. Moles of carbon dioxide. But we need to know how moles of carbon dioxide are related to moles of this propane because that's what we started with. So how do we get that? We get it from the reaction. We know that for every one mole of this propane, three moles of carbon dioxide are produced. This is the magic ratio. One mole of propane for every three moles of this stuff is produced. So if I shovel another mole of propane in there, I should get another three moles of this out. If I take another shovel full and throw another shovel of propane in there and burn it, I should get another three moles of this. So it's a ratio. It's telling you every time you dump another mole of propane in, you should get three moles of carbon dioxide out. That is the importance of these coefficients here. And notice in the last section, we actually call them the stoichiometric coefficients. They're telling you how these things combine. So the way you actually solve the problem is you need to write a conversion factor. The way I'm going to write it is one mole of C3H8 is a ratio or locked in because of this reaction to three moles of CO2. Now anytime you write one of these conversion factors, you have the choice of flipping it either way you want. I could have written moles of C3H8 on top and moles of CO2 on the bottom. But doing that wouldn't have done anything for me because you want to cancel the units. Moles of C3H8 cancels with moles of propane down here and that's gone. The only thing you have left unit wise is moles of carbon dioxide, which is exactly what I'm trying to find. How many moles of carbon dioxide are formed? So it's as simple as that. You take 0.529, you multiply it by 3, and then you divide by 1 because the 1 is on the bottom. Of course, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So you literally take 0.529 times 3 divided by 1, and when you do that, you get 1.59 moles of CO2. And this is how many moles are produced. So that's where you do all these problems. You write down what you start with, you find a ratio from your reaction to cancel units, and the unit that you're left with should be what you're trying to find. That's the game that you play. In this case, we take this times 3 divided by 1, we get 1.59 moles of carbon dioxide.